Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you my incredible trip to Australia and New Zealand, where I explored the wonders of local agriculture. In this video, I will show you images of some innovative farms and beautiful farming landscape I visited during this adventure. I will also explain you why Australian and New Zealand agriculture is so unique. Are you ready? Let's go! Australia is a huge country with a powerful and diversified farming landscape. What makes Australian agriculture so special is its capacity to export 70% of its entire production. Agriculture contributes around 3% to Australia's GDP and employs around 250,000 people. Since Australian farmers receive very little government support, farmers must be extremely innovative and efficient to remain competitive pushing them to produce as much as possible at a lower cost. Why smaller than Australia, New Zealand is also at the forefront of agriculture. New Zealand farming is mainly focusing on sheep, cattle breeding and high value crops. That's probably why I met more sheep than inhabitants during this trip. Agriculture represents around 6% of GDP and employs around 150,000 people. New Zealand's farming strategy is based on quality, which is why farmers use new technologies to produce better. As far as all the farmers I met were concerned, their aim is to produce better with fewer resources, because their core market is premium export. <laughs> What impressed me the most is the ability of farmers to diversify their crops and adapt their working methods to the specific environment constraints. Australia's varied climates from arid to tropical mean that farmers must choose crops suited to their environment. Australia can produce any kind of crops all year round. For example, in the tropical north, sugarcane, bananas and other tropical fruits are the main crops, while in the more temperate regions, vineyards and orchards are grown. Given that 70% of agricultural production is exported and that no subsidies are granted, farmers are mainly driven by the market demands. During my trip, I took part in the harvest of a 15,000 hectares family farm. The organization and the efficiency of the machines were impressive. The machine ran continuously without interruption to maximize the efficiency of the operation and more global economy of scale is really taken seriously on these large-scale operations. Every improvement can result potential saving per hectare, which at the end of the year can represent several thousand dollars. That's why farms don't hesitate to invest in bigger, more productive machinery. On the other hand, farms need to stay competitive, so that's why farmers are rapidly adopting new technologies to optimize production and also cut costs. For example, the use of laser weeding machines or targeted pesticide spraying that can reduce the use of chemicals, decrease labor costs and also increase efficiency. For both countries, technological innovation seems to be the key to overcome the challenges facing agriculture. Several factors are contributing to the rapid development of innovation in these countries. Labor shortage, rising costs, large-scale operation and competitivity. My aim on this trip was to get in touch with innovative farmers to better understand how these technologies are integrated into their farm. Let's have a look on the technologies I've seen. First, the swamp farm robot in a broadacre farm. The machine was equipped with a targeted spraying system that runs over 10,000 hectares after six months. Scott opened his door to share his experience of the machine and why he wouldn't go back. Then we have the Axid robot in New South Wales, a versatile robot used for different tasks. Beefwood Farm, one of the most innovative farms in Australia, welcomed me for several days to follow their operation with this machine. Through the class network in New Zealand, I was also being able to see the free wheel smaller version mowing a premium apple orchard. Mm -hmm. 
Then we have the laser weeding machine from Carbon Robotics, a machine that costs over $1.5 million, which can eliminate weeds with surgical precision without the use of chemicals. Frankie, a leafy grower, gave us an interview to explain his choice and how he planned to make this machine profitable. I've also spotted many targeted spraying like the weed it or carbon based system. These technologies detect and spray only the weeds. Australia and its large farm are the world's first adopters of these systems, reducing the herbicide consumption and spraying costs by 90%. In New Zealand, I've seen the Oxin robot working in the fleet. This versatile robot can do any task that a vineyard could require. I was lucky enough to see four machines in operation in a large-scale plot at the Pernod Ricard Vineyard, a company that already works with 19 Oxin machines. Then the Monarch electrical tractor in a cherry orchard. This tractor was in operation in the world's first 100% electrical farm. Mike Hesse, the owner, even gave me a presentation of his entire operation and let me drive his tractor. Impressive. I cannot wait to share this experience in a video shortly. And finally, the fleet of Bureau robots in action. Small, versatile and user-friendly robots already used in New Zealand vineyard and orchards to reduce labor costs. I was able to participate to a demonstration and have some fun playing with them. Cool experience that will also be shared in the future. During my trip, I met hundreds of passionate farmers and local players who welcomed me into their teams as if I was one of them. It's with pride and constant desire to improve their practices that this farmer evolved, and that really impressed me. They shared their challenges and successes with me, and it was fascinating to see how they are constantly adapting their practices to an ever-changing environment. Thank you all for your warm welcome. In conclusion, my trip to Australia and New Zealand showed me just how different farming can be from one region to another one. Meeting innovative farmers showed me that there is every reason to believe that the future of agriculture lies in the adoption of new technologies and more environmentally friendly practices. I hope this video has inspired you as much as it has me. Feel free to leave your comment and subscribe for more content on modern farming. I will leave you with a few bonus videos. See you next month.